Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today is a recovery day for me, and I thought I'd take you along for a little day in the life while I explain why, as a projector in human design, creating the flexibility in your life to allow yourself time to recover from periods of higher activity, stress, pressure, and productivity can be so helpful and needed for our overall well-being. So welcome to my life. <laughs> this was a Friday, and I want to say that as someone who's trying to be more intuitive about how I live, I don't really have a schedule, so I just try to recognize if there is a day when I really need a recovery break. This particular day is what we call in our co-parenting family a switch day, which is a day when my eight-year-old son switches from one house to another. I had just spent four wonderful days with him, and after dropping him off at the bus for school, it was time for his dad to take over after school that day. For me, sometimes I can need a little bit of time to adjust to the difference in pace and energy of my life when I don't have my son, and deal with any of the emotions that might come up. These mornings, I'm glad that I have a big cuddly dog who is really good about allowing me to hug her extra tight and spend some quality time regulating next to her warm, comforting weight. Switch days tend to turn into recovery days for me because as a projector, I'm a non-energy type. I don't really have an internal motor and my ability to work at a high capacity is limited to just a couple of hours a day. We are not meant to hustle or grind or live daily lives suffering under the weight of millions of things to do, pressure to produce, or duties that require prolonged repetitive actions. My son, however, is a generator. He's a sacral being who is meant to be a worker bee in our world. He has got energy and the ability to respond to life with gusto. The great thing about that is that he energizes me. He has definition in three centers that I don't, and he can influence me in those areas, even giving me amplified access to areas of my life that I don't have regular definition around, like emotions, willpower, and drive. When he's around, I often don't feel as drained by the activities we do together, or days when we have to get up and go, as I do when I'm alone and trying to push myself to be active and productive. This is a great thing about relationships with other people whose design is different from ours. But, and this may also be a natural byproduct of being a single mom on the days when I have my son, it is a heavy load to be a caretaker. It all seems to catch up with me after a couple of days of managing my home and my kiddo all by myself. And as difficult as it is to not have your child full time, I think it's also important to see the gift in having the time and space on your off days to recover and come back fully into your own energy so that you can see to your own needs. So this recovery day, I allowed myself a slow morning full of no pressure activities to allow me time to come back to a neutral place from which to go forward into the next few days. I took a foggy morning walk, I cuddled Winnie and watched some calming YouTube videos from the couch while I enjoyed my tea. Then I spent about an hour doing simple, neutral tasks around my house, like doing the dishes, tidying up, putting dirty clothes in the hamper, and making my bed. I did a little self-care by using this morning miracle bar on my face. This was a recipe I got from your mate Ginger Kate on TikTok. I believe it's a mix of grated cucumber, castor oil, flaxseed gel, and aloe vera that is mixed and frozen. After that, it was time to have a quick and simple breakfast. Fun side note about me, <laughs> I grew up in upstate New York, but my grandparents lived in Maine. So I spent my summers visiting them on the rocky coastlines of southern Maine. The Stonewall Kitchen Factory was actually nearby, so <laughs> I've been eating Stonewall's blueberry jam for years and years, and I always love stopping to buy some whenever I'm there. Speaking of, I recently made a sourdough starter and have been experimenting with bread making. This is the fourth loaf that I've made with my starter, lovingly named Sharon. And even though it was a little too wet, I was able to salvage the dough and turn it into a pretty decent loaf. I like that the process takes a while because I don't have to rush and I can take my time and work the steps in around my life rather than being at the mercy of my kitchen for hours. With some food in me and some basic life stuff taken care of, I decided to take a nice hot shower and then do something that was a little bit more fun and energizing. I had just gotten an order from Sheen and had some new clothes to try on, so I did a little try-on party. 
I normally don't like to support fast fashion and I try to thrift a lot of my clothes. But with spring coming, I wanted to add some earth-toned cottage core items to my closet and Sheen has a really good selection of very affordable options. I loved this green button-up dress and with a little alteration around the waist, I think it's going to fit perfectly. Yes, if you had forgotten, I am a multi-potentialite, so of course, at some point, I bought myself a sewing machine and taught myself to sew, just because. This green plaid 1950s style dress is divine. I got it for an upcoming trip to Disney World where I plan on bounding as my favorite Scottish princess, Merida, for some Dapper Day festivities. Now this green pinafore dress was an impulse buy. And as someone with a defined G-center, which is my identity, with direct channels to my throat and ajna, which is more like my ideas and opinions, um, self-expression is actually a really big part of who I am. It feels not only accessible, but imperative that I find different ways of communicating who I am and what I think. One of the ways I do that is through exploring different kinds of looks and styles. I am very eclectic. So one day I might dress like a 90s grunge kid, and the next I might want to look like a Gibson girl gathering flowers in a field. I follow the impulses when they come to show the world who I am in different ways. This adorable embroidered sweater was a must as soon as I saw it. The cozy, natural, crafted feel was really speaking to me, and I just fell in love with it. So now that I felt like I had really dropped back into myself a bit more, after a morning of low stress activities that indulged some of the things that make me feel more like me, and I had really come back to more of my base state, I felt ready and able to actually sit down and do some work. Now I want to take a moment to acknowledge the immense privilege that I have to be able to give myself a recovery day at will when I need them. My life is actually quite simple despite the plethora of things that I choose to fill it with. I work from home. I have a job that is flexible enough that I can do my work at odd hours and take some time during the day to do other things or priorities. I have over three weeks worth of PTO within a year, which also allows me to take vacation and personal days if I really think that I'm unable to work on a specific day. And without anyone besides my son to care for, which is only for half of the week, I usually have the time and freedom to do what I need and what I want to do most of the time. Now, I have been on the other side of this scenario, working full-time outside of the home, trying to be a wife and a mother and doing it all, and being completely overwhelmed, overtasked, and suffering from really severe burnout. So I, do, I, I completely understand how frustrating it can be to not have the ability to do these things for yourself. And so I, I know how rare it is um, to be able to care for my personal needs in this way. And so I just want to send love out there to anyone who may not be in a position right now to do the same for yourself. If you do have the support to be able to take a couple of hours to remove yourself from carrying the mental load of your house or being responsible for stressful tasks or the pressure of producing for a little bit, there are so many ways that you can unplug from the often very generator-based way that many of us exist to get back into your own energy and support your projector needs. So many options, depending on what feels good to you. But being in nature, doing some sort of easy movement like yoga or meditation, even gardening or reading, crafting, practicing new skills, or just enjoying things that you love that don't have an end result, just doing them because you love them. These are all great ways to feed your little projector soul and just give yourself a little bit of time to be in your own energy. After a couple of hours of work that I could have been doing in my home office, but I decided to do on the couch under a cozy heated blanket, I put away my computer and grabbed my most recent knitting project and my makeup bag. Knitting and crochet are so relaxing and rewarding for me, but I would almost never actually do it if I did not force myself to put other things away and give myself a break from thinking about doing things. <laughs> I So I've been trying to decompress by putting on relaxing music and doing a knitting sprint for like 15 minutes after work, and I've been enjoying that. This is gonna be an infinity scarf eventually, and I just finished my first real knitting project, which was this really cute winter headband. You can see that I actually missed a stitch on the side, but as a beginner knitter, I, I think it came out pretty good. Okay, then it was time to actually put on some makeup and get ready to leave the house because I am in the middle of doing a musical right now and I had a performance that night. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Jenny and I am addicted to hobbies, something all of my fellow multi-passionate creatives will understand well. 
Um, I actually lived in New York City a long time ago while I was pursuing life as a professional actor. But over time, I came to realize that that life just wasn't in alignment for me. And the great thing about life is that just because something isn't right for us on a professional level, that doesn't mean that we have to give it up in entirely, right? So I kept doing theater. Um, I've been doing theater for over 25 years now, and I've cultivated a really rich life as a part of the local theater scene where I live that I really treasure and that brings me a lot of joy and fulfillment. Being around theater people gives me an incredible rush of energy and passion that helps me push as a projector to do what I do best, which is drilling down through focus on the people that I am on stage with in order to be fully invested in the moment and find that genuine connection and the emotional truth that makes good theater so good. But I also need to have the stamina and the will to show up day after day after day to make sure that a show comes together. And I can't really do that all of the time with my projector energy. So that's why it's beneficial for me to be around all of these wonderful, energetic, creative theater types. But I do have to take breaks from shows. I can't do them back to back. Um, so I have to take breaks in order to get back into my own energy and recuperate from the amount of time that I'm spending around all of those um, other people's energy. But for me, it is absolutely worth it to do something that I love surrounded by other people who love the same thing as me. And I love them too. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an all around good deal for everyone. <laughs> Balance is really important, no matter what type you are, whether you're a specialist or a generalist, whether you have sacral energy or not. So I try to be mindful of this throughout my day. So if I have a rehearsal or a performance in the evening, I try to spend my day conserving energy and being more with myself. If I have my son, then my focus and goals for the day are just different, and that's okay. It's the practice of being mindful of these things that we can all start to pay more attention to in order to be more supported and aligned on the daily. And if you're a projector like me or a part-time single mom like me or a low energy person like me or whatever your circumstances might be, I really hope that you can take the care to allow yourself recovery days when you need them. Society wants us to believe that we can all function at the same level every day, that we can just like slay our routine and produce things like maniacs during our waking hours, regardless of what else we've got going on in our home or where we are in our monthly cycle or whether or not we're struggling with unseen stresses or burnout or mental illness. And society is wrong. They're wrong. <laughs> you are allowed to rest and recover. You are allowed to be with yourself and to give yourself what you need when you need it. And with that, thank you for joining me on this little recovery day vlog. I really appreciate it. Um, yes, by the time I left the house that evening, I was feeling more refreshed and grounded and, well, like myself. And that is a good feeling. Take care. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.